My old lathe here is a heavy oil drinker, especially uh, ISO 32 oil. It goes down very smoothly. And uh, when I fill up the oil gallery, it is uh, gone in a minute. Well, that's quite a mess. It's very close to the belt. You don't want oil on the belt. I guess I lied. That took more than two minutes. It probably goes quicker when the uh, lathe is warmed up. So I guess this is a good reason to start making my own drip oilers. And uh, I've searched the web for some inspiration. Well, uh, basically I searched for some uh, ideas I could rip off. And here's the result. It's not my uh, final design, so I'm calling this a uh, prototype. Here's a closer look. Aluminium cap with O ring to seal it off. This is a uh, modified M8 bolt with a hole drilled through and some uh, thread tapped into it. And this is a piece of copper, bronze, whatever, with an O ring to seal it off. Jim. That's the wick installed. This bolt is a bit tapered where it goes from the threaded to the non-threaded part. And I'm thinking that this taper will seal off the cup. If it is leaking I will add some uh, Loctite. Alright, so now I'm going to make a, a testing station out of this uh, strawberry jam jar. That reminded me of one of the first things I ever did on the lathe. Cutting up a lid to make a uh, can for my oil. It's actually still here. There you go. <laughs> the idea here is that uh, when you fill it up You shoot the oil straight into this uh, hole. Hopefully some oil passes by the wick and gets uh, directly into the bearings. So the fill hole will also function as the uh, ventilation hole. And when you're done you lock things up with a screw. And I'm hoping that then most of the oil will stay in the oiler. Of course, it will need a uh, a uh, O-ring or a fiber washer to uh, make it airtight. It took a while, but it is starting to drip, and the interval is about 20 seconds. The oil is a uh, mixture of uh, ISO 46 and uh, ISO 32. Well, I'll leave it like this for a while and check back after an hour or so. It's stabilizing at uh, a drop every minute or so, a little less than a minute. I'm wondering if the wick length also uh, affects the drip speed. The thickness of the wick does, and the oil viscosity probably also. But the wick length, 
I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to close the lid now. And I'm hoping that the... Uh, And I'm hoping that it, uh, that it will stop dripping now. My testing station was uh, flawed. I couldn't see anything through the glass. So I'm now using uh, some tool seal. With the vent hole closed, it uh, has almost stopped dripping. There were a few drops, but uh, it's at least two minutes ago when the last uh, drop fell. And I don't see a new drop forming. So let's open up the vent hole again. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Ooh, there it comes. Almost. Yay. Well, that was quicker than a minute. Looks like the uh, drip rate is uh, slowing down again. Well, I'll leave the camera running and I'll uh, check the intervals later. Guess this is boring. Yeah, I'm out of here. So I thought maybe the hole for the wick is too uh, narrow and uh, it's uh, holding back the oil flow. So I installed a, a thinner wick but uh, that didn't improve things. It's uh, very slow now. New plan. I'm going to install this uh, homespun piece of yarn. Hopefully uh, I can get it through the hole. It is uh, pretty thick. Well I got it in, but I must say that's a lot of wick. Let's add some oil. Here I am uh, testing uh, a single thread of uh, cotton uh, knitting yarn. Well, I'm done testing. I'm not even getting close to the intervals I like. And that is uh, about two trips every minute. And I'm also still using uh, a thinner oil than the, I'm planning to use. So uh, it looks like this uh, hole in here is uh, the limiting factor. So uh, I need to get back to the drawing board and make uh, a new one. Um, talking about drawing boards, if anybody knows a good cut software, open source, that uh, isn't uh, too complicated and has a uh, low learning curve, I would be interested. Well, I learned a thing or two and uh, that's usually a good thing. To be continued. <laughs> 